Hello everyone, so for today's video we're going to be going over the combo guide for the Poker Knights Wing Dragon of Rod deck that you've already seen the deck feature for, or if you haven't, you can click that handy little card up there and you get a fill for the deck. So that's the deck that we're going to be taking a look at and throughout this video I'm going to be teaching you how to take this deck all the way from beginner to pro and climb all the way to the top of the rank ladder. So let's jump into some solo games and I'll start showing you how the whole deck comes together. So. It's time for a good news, bad news situation when it comes to playing this deck. The good news is that the combos are really not that complicated and it won't take you very long after playing the deck to understand exactly how all the cards interact together and you'll be able to pilot it at a relatively fluent level quite quickly. The bad news is that the real strategy in this deck comes from managing your resources correctly and identifying exactly when you're going to go for the one turn kill on your opponent. So. Very basically, let's start taking a look at some of the two card combos that you're going to be playing in order to line up those kill shots. And then we'll go over sort of the management of the resources that you're going to need to make sure that your deck keeps working. And then lastly, we'll look at sort of playing how we play out hand considering different hand traps and stuff. With a hand like this, uh, you're looking for two card pairs, quite like very on brand for poker. And in this case, got any Guardian Slime and Joker's Straight are a perfect pair so what happens here is that you can activate the joker straight which lets you summon the three royal knights directly from your deck uh, so what we'll do is discard the guardian slime and then we get the special summon a queen's knight we again get to add a king's knight to our hand uh, we then get to normal summon a monster so that's kind of important for reasons that i'll cover a little bit later and then we can activate the effect of King's Knight and Guardian Slime. So, interesting situation here is because of the way you can arrange the chain, you can actually prevent, choose what your opponent is going to be able to Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. So, if I put the Guardian Slime at the top, there's a chance that the Guardian Slime can get negated by Ash Blossom. If I put the King's Knight at the top, there's a chance that the King's Knight could be negated by Ash Blossom. In this demo, I'm not going to show you anything uh, considering an Ash Blossom. So it doesn't really matter how we're going to arrange a chain, but when you're strategically playing the deck, this is kind of where the challenge comes in to figuring out these kinds of openings that you're going to get from an opponent. So, uh, firstly, Guardian Slime always searches for Ancient Chant. Ancient Chant will always let us search for the Winged Dragon of Ra from our deck or our graveyard. So it means we always have access to it, even if we have sent the wing, one copy of the Winged Dragon of Ra from our deck to the graveyard using the that graph looks greener so the next part of this combo is just simply activating ancient chant and grabbing our wing dragon of Ra, and then we banish the ancient chant from our graveyard do make sure that you banish the ancient chant from your graveyard before you tribute summon otherwise you won't get the extra attack points on your wing dragon of Ra. and then we get an extra normal summon so we just go ahead and tribute summon our three monsters and Wing Dragon of Ra, we pay all our life points for our 100. And congratulations, you're now an expert with this deck and you can go take it to the top of the rank ladder. But in all seriousness, there's a little bit more to it than that, but like, as an example, that's a bread and butter scenario that you're going to be looking at because then any monster with less than 4,900 attack points in attack position will let you attack straight over it and win the game. It's a normal summon as well, so you can attack over things like El Shadol Construct and it won't trigger. So there's little tricks like that where monsters that are protected from special summon monsters won't uh, be able to defend themselves against Ra's Fury. So let me pull up another game and I'll show you another two card pair that we can look for and we'll go from there. The main card for this deck is That Grass Looks Greener. The idea of this card is that you send the top number of cards from your deck to the graveyard so that your deck matches the opponent's deck. So we've got 55 cards, they've got 35, so we're going to send 20 cards from our deck to the graveyard. This will then allow us to make a lot of plays and get a lot of resources based on the results. So we're going to go ahead and activate this card, slam it down. If our opponent has Ash Blossom or some interaction, we've got Cool Buy and Cross Out Designator. So this card is 100% going to resolve, which means our chance of winning is extremely high depending on what gets sent to the graveyard. Yep, so we uh, politely send 20 cards to the graveyard and we'll take a look and go over the cards. So uh, we've got a Joker straight, so we're gonna get that back during the end phase, that's great. We've got Fairy Tale Snow, that's a lot of monsters we can revive, that's 
uh, very good. So we've got like infinite rank four materials. We have a second fairy tale snow uh, because we can. We have a Joker's Knight, so this will also help refresh the deck. And we have a Perform Mage Damage Juggler. So if our opponent had gone first and would have set up, we would have had quite a lot of room to combo off of this. Uh, so what we're gonna do is start this turn by banishing the Damage Juggler. And then this will let us essentially add the Trick Clown from our deck to our hand. And then we can use our Trick Clown and we can summon one copy of Fairy Tale Snow. Technically what we could do is banish 14 cards from our graveyard, play Ancient Chant, get Winged Dragon of Ra and that's an OTK. But I'm going to show you guys another option to go down which is a little bit less all in as well. So we can bring back our Fairy Tale Snow and we can banish all the cards we don't care about. So we don't need the Grass that's greener, any of our hand traps, uh, any of these cards, they're all useless to us at this point. So very key and one of the big strategies for this deck is managing your graveyard correctly. I'm going to go over that a little bit later, but you want to avoid banishing things like Joker Straight, Unites, um, and... Yeah, the, basically you want to avoid the Knights and Joker Straits and Joker's Wild and that kind of stuff to keep your resources flowing. So, we go ahead and get our Fairy Tail Snow. I just realized for this tutorial that this is going to be a little bit uh, trickier to show you. But essentially we've got two Light Monsters here. So what we would do is summon Star Leech Pally Dynamo. Let's go ahead and check that here. Uh, we detach two materials from the Star Leech, and then that would trigger the Trick Clan. So Trick Clan would come back. Fairy Tail Snow would come back because we just banished another seven cards for it. Then we could make Utopia Double uh, down here. This card will activate and let us search our deck for a double or nothing, and then it becomes Utopia and doubles its attack. Uh, where's my Utopia? There it is. Uh, so it's a 5,000 attack. Star Leech, Palidynamo has made one of their monsters zero attack, so the Utopia can attack. And then you can use negate your own attack, then use double or nothing and attack over anything for 10,000. So that right there is just literally that grass looks greener. And we've got an OTK straight out of that, essentially. Just uh, even if we had no other cards in our hand, we could have got there. We had our other option. We had our Winged Dragon of Raw play right here. Uh, it, I would have showed you a little bit more, but obviously because I'm trying to do single games, uh, we don't have any cards in play. So let's jump into the next video and I'll show you a bit more of what this deck can do. This hand has another pair of cards that we can just win the game outright with. So in this case, we're looking at Foolish Burial and Monster Reborn. We have drawn enough to make our deck really go off, but let's just go ahead and show you how these two cards also act as a two card pair to OTK the opponent. So we go ahead and Foolish Burial our Guardian Slime, who's just over here. Got a lot of monsters in the deck, so we're going to be scrolling for a while. There we go. We can just send the Guardian Slime to the graveyard. Uh, and then we can play Monster Reborn and target that Guardian Slime. And once we got Guardian Slime back, we can go ahead and immediately summon the Ancient Egyptian God Slime. So, well, it's just Egyptian God Slime. I like calling it Ancient, just on brand. But yeah, the Egyptian God Slime, so we just go ahead and special summon this from our extra deck because one its secondary summon requirement is that you just send a level 10 Aqua Monster with zero attack. You're supposed to send the trap, but Guardian Slime is also a suitable candidate. Guardian Slime will activate and let us search for our Ancient Chant card. Then this will then let us go ahead and search for the Winged Dragon of Ra, wherever we have it hidden. Uh, so in our graveyard or in our deck, we'll go ahead and take Wing Dragon of Raw. Banish the Ancient Champ from our graveyard. This then lets us gain the attack of a monster with tribute, and this is can be treated as free tributes for the tribute summon of a monster. So that will fit the ticket for the Wing Dragon of Raw. 
So we just go ahead and put the Wing Dragon Frog here. And then we activate our effect. And then our kill range for this is anything with 2900 attack or less. So that's going to be enough to kill this. I don't know what my opponent's face down card is. I'd have probably played this a little bit differently if I was playing a real game. But uh, yeah, we'll just go for the swing and see what happens. It could be Regeki Break. I can't remember what the AI plays in this deck. No, we get it through. So there's another example of shooting your opponent out with just two cards. It's just, if you can get Guardian Slime in play, uh, you just go ahead and turn it into Egyptian God Slime, get the Ancient Chant, and then you've got uh, quite a significant kill range at 2,900 or less. Okay, guys, for this hand, we're going to be looking at a way of getting through with another pair of cards, which is going to be the Performage Flame Eater and the Guardian Slime. So what you can see from my hand is I don't actually have the Flame Eater in my hand yet, so we're going to just sort that bit out first. Um, we're going to use our Forbidden Droplet to do so. We'll go ahead and negate the Sand Guns effect uh, by discarding the Damage Juggler. Uh, we also get the half the Sand Gun, which makes our kill range very, very likely, because we can do that essentially over any monster. Then our kill range goes to up to 10, just under 10,000. Uh, so then what we can do is banish the Perform Age Damage Juggler. This lets us search our deck for a Perform Age card, so we'll take the Flame Eater. And then in this case, we can Normal Summon the Flame Eater. Activate the effect. Deal 500 damage to each player, which lets us trigger the Guardian Slime. We can put the Guardian Slime in play, and then it's just pretty much the same line that we saw before with the Monster Reborn play, which is going to be... Egyptian God Slime, and then straight up into the Winged Dragon of Ra once we resolve all of our effects. So we get our Ancient Chant, and then that gets us our Winged Dragon of Ra. It's just like kind of these little chains of cards essentially that get you from point A to point B. And the key thing when you're trying to figure this out is to know where you want to end up and then try and work backwards from there like from your hand it's like oh what do i need to do to get to this situation so yeah then we can just go ahead and tribute summon the wing dragon of raw pay all of our life points and then we've got lethal right there uh so what would have made this hand even more brutal is the fact that we've got the Godarla. so even if our opponent is set up uh, some kind of negation or something that would prevent us from playing we'd be able to use the Godarla over that and then we still have enough to attack directly over our own kaiju to win the game. Uh, I'll go ahead and put the uh, game winning attack in. Uh, I don't know if it goes through. Again, we play a little bit differently if we're playing against a real player. Yeah, case in point. Uh, so this is kind of things that you need to be wary of uh, whilst you're playing uh, when against a real player. But just for the purpose of the combo and just sort of showing you how everything works, that would have been a game shot we would have gone for right there and we would have won the game. So this is a reason that we play things on our extra deck like the uh, Nightmare Phoenix, the Constella Pelides, our Tornado Dragon, our Star uh, Stellar Knight, the Eltros. So it's important to know that while you can take a game shot quite, like, quite easily like that, for example, combining these two cards, if you commit everything into this, we've only got 100 life points left and I've got this monster in attack mode and I can't do anything else for the rest of the turn. So this would be kind of like an example of not taking act, not taking this line even though you can. And I'm going to cover that a little bit more in the next part of this video. But now you've got, guys have got a good understanding of what the two card combos are, the fundamentals of the deck. So now we're going to transition over to some more of the technical play. For the next part of this guide, I figured it'd be easy to just jump into the deck builder and walk you through some bits and pieces so that we can then get an idea when we go into the replays exactly why I made the decisions that I made so you can get an idea of what you should be doing. So, as I mentioned before, this deck is mostly about resource management and timing your attacks. And as you saw in that previous uh, clip, that if you time anything incorrectly, you can find yourself just snatching defeat from the jewels of victory. So the first thing to keep track of in this deck is your knights lineup. We've got two queens, two jacks, two kings. We never want both any of these cards in our hand, but you know we can make it work if worst case we have a king in our hand. 
So ideally we want to try and get those out of our hand and into the graveyard as quickly as possible or I, more preferably in play so we can use them as materials for our summons or setting up uh, our OTKs. Now knowing that you've got two queens, two kings, two jacks and where they are at all times is paramount to you being able to pilot this deck successfully. The, to resolve the joker straight you need to have a queen's knight in deck that's non-negotiable and then you need to have either king's knight or jack's knight in the deck to resolve the second part of the effect so if at any point you see that you've got a queen in a hand and a queen in your graveyard you cannot resolve joker straight if you've got uh, for example uh, both jacks and both kings in hand you're not going to be able to resolve joker straight so these are the kinds of situations that we want to avoid or pilot around in order to get the most mileage out of our deck. So, tricks to doing that would be uh, discarding them uh, with Joker straight to then in the end phase put them back into the deck, uh, which then means we can resolve our Joker straight and also our Joker's wild. So, we have three cards that can actually shuffle cards back into the deck. That's Joker's knight, Joker's straight, and Joker's wild. Now, interestingly, this is a little bit like playing uh, blackjack in the sense that you can count the cards. Obviously, I'm not suggesting you go into a casino and do that. Bad things will probably happen to you. Uh, there's a great book on that uh, by Ben Meserick called Bringing Down the House, one of my favorite books of all time. Definitely worth the read. But the general principle behind it, the MIT counting method for Blackjack was a plus and minus system of figuring out how many high cards are in the deck. So for us, the way that we got kind of similar to that is we wanna know at all times where our high cards are. And that's our queen, jack, and king. So once we've we've got that, we need to start planning. Uh, every time we use a Joker straight, we've got to take in mind that we're taking three cards out of our deck, and then in the end phase, we're only putting one back. So you're going to run out of resources. You can only resolve this twice, assuming you don't draw any of the other ones before then you're not going to be able to resolve your other cards. So we need to look at ways to put both Joker straight and Joker's wild, or Joker straight, Joker's wild, and Joker's knight. Ideally, all three of them in the graveyard during the end phase, add all three cards back to your hand, and then you could be able to do your full combo next turn. So you end up in situations later in the game where Joker's Wild just becomes discard fodder because we use it once to resolve our uh, Joker straight, and then we spend the rest of the game essentially discarding it to pay for the cost so that we can then keep putting these back in and then shuffling cards back into our deck. Now you can, with these cards, actually shuffle back any light warrior monster. So that does mean you can put things like your number 39 Utopia, your Star Liege Palidynamo uh, back into the deck. You're not exclusively tied to the, the Poker Knights package. However, any time that you do that, you have to remember that you are burning through resources for your deck and you're not gonna be able to keep resolving these Joker straights every turn that you do that. So you're trying to look for ways to profitly, profitably shuffle back one extra card per turn. And you can do tricks like, for example, play Joker straight, discard the Joker's wild, summon uh, Queen's Knight, King's Knight, then not summon the Jack's Knight. Sometimes it makes sense. And then you can go ahead and use these two as a material for something. And then in the end phase, you'll be able to use these two to shuffle these two cards back. And then you've got two in the deck and you've also got a way of resolving the straight again next turn so you can keep coming at the opponent. It's very tricky and it's this kind of level of graveyard management is something that's gonna be very important, especially since we have no control over the cards that we send to the graveyard with that grass looks greener. We could, for example, play that grass looks greener and send two queens, uh, a king, and then the rest of our deck to the graveyard. And then we can't resolve Joker straight until we put a queen back into the deck. So you're going to be looking at ways like this uh, to figure out exactly how your turns are going to play out. And yeah, there is a bit of randomness involved, but cards like Fairytale Snow means that that's a considerably less bad because you can essentially keep getting the snow back out of the graveyard uh, to keep using as a material or as a resource. And of course, we've got access to things like Perform Ace Damage Juggler, which banishes from the graveyard, which then gives you more resources so that you can still go for a double or nothing OTK if something goes horribly wrong. That's a little bit about, graveyard, uh, about uh, the management of the Poker Knights. So the key thing with Snow is when you're banishing from the graveyard, obviously we don't want to banish our Perform Age Damage Jugglers. We want to avoid banishing our Knights at all costs. Uh, these are really, really bad. 
Joker's Knight, ideally you don't want to banish. There's some times where you might be forced to, and that's okay, but ideally try to avoid it. So we're going to try and be banishing the rest of our Perform Mage package, any Guardian Slimes that we don't need access to, uh, spell cards such as excess copies of Ancient Chant, uh, all of our hand traps. All of these cards can be banished completely freely. We have no need for them after they've been played. And pretty much all the spells except for Joker's Straight. Uh, so unlike uh, other traditional that grass looks greener builds, you may end up in situations where your Fairy Tale Snow resources are a little bit more limited, where you have to think just a little bit harder about them before you, before you commit them. But once you get used to juggling these kinds of resources, uh, you will end up in a situation where you have a lot more gas in your deck than your opponent. Your opponent may be able to throw a combo at you and then throw one follow-up, which may be some kind of access code talker to kill you. Actually kind of hard to kill you through Damage Juggler or Fairy Tail Snow in the graveyard, but there you go. Uh, and then you've got a chance to just keep pushing your opponent, keep grinding, keep grinding, because you're going to keep putting resources back in your deck and threatening three knights every turn. Another cool thing with this deck uh, is Forbidden Droplets. Uh, we get to enjoy the full benefits of this because it gives us extra ways to discard Joker's Knight, Joker's Wild, and Joker's Straight, which means we can negate three of our opponent's cards. They can't respond to it. And then in the end phase, we shuffle back three knights, add all three cards back to our hand. And then we've profited. Our deck is a profit of three because we put three cards back in, and now we can resolve uh, our Joker's Straight. And we can go ahead and discard the Joker's Wild, and then we can summon a Joker's Knight. And then what we could do from that is use the King's Knight and the Queen's Knight to make a rank four uh, light warrior monster. So I'd probably Utopia. Again, if we weren't uh, in an unfortunate situation where Banquet of Millions was a deck, we'd be playing 15 cards and we could probably put, uh, we put in two more cards that we could summon, uh, light warriors. Um, then you've got the two in play. And then if you've got uh, this in your hand, Joker's, uh, Joker's Knight, you can use that alongside the Jack's Knight to make Homestead of Pelides, and that's in itself a really powerful, a really powerful play. Right, so the next part uh, for this is I'm going to jump into a solo game and just walk you through some opening hands so you get an idea of uh, what to look for and how to how to play them essentially, how to sequence things correctly so that you're going to be able to resolve the most number of cards without getting completely destroyed by an opponent's hand trap. Okay, opening hand one. We've opened two knights, so that's not great, but we do have Joker straight. There is a lot we can do here. Our opponent's got one face down card, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, interestingly, we not, we've not got an easy way of getting rid of that face down card. Actually, we do. Yeah, okay. So we can OTK from here. So let's uh let's dive into it and see if we get away with it so the first thing we're going to do is activate joker straight we're protected from our opponent's uh, ash blossom here because we've got easy access to cool by the grave so we're going to go ahead and throw out our copy of queen's knight because we're not going to need this this then lets us normal special summon a queen's knight we can go ahead and then add the king's knight to our hand King's Knight can then get Normal Summoned, and that gets us Jack's Knight. Our basic, our basic trio. Almost every deck I seem to be building has like a trio of cards that work together, so that's actually quite funny. Uh, so in this part here, uh, what we can do now is Normal Summon the other King's Knight, and then we're going to get another Jack's Knight. So I do want to point out that this is very all in, like we've depleted our deck of loads of resources and there's no way we're going to be able to put this many knights back into our deck. So we want to be winning this turn. Uh, the two Jacks knights, our pair of Jacks, are going to make a Constellar Pelides. And then Constellar Pelides can shift away that terrifying back row card. Uh, yeah, let's get rid of that. And then our opponents left a monster with less than 2,000 attack in play. We also had the Forbidden Droplets to make sure that that was a thing. Uh, so now we can go ahead and make Utopia double with our remaining resources. We just go ahead and overlay these. It's not quite as stylish as getting the Winged Dragon of Ra to do the job, but there's going to be a lot of games where you go ahead and just close the game out with Utopia Double because it's a little bit more accessible to get to without you needing to draw other specific cards 
to do it because it's all in the extra deck essentially uh that's just literally a joker straight two level fours they've got a monster with less than two fires and attack in play uh we can just go ahead and go to the battle phase and go for a swing use utopia's effect to negate our own attack uh yeah we'll detach queen and then double or nothing comes down utopia then the attack stops but you get to attack again and then we just go ahead and slam in for over 10 fires and don't negate your second attack that will lead you to a bad time and then you've got the game that way so that was very all in uh we did have called by the grave to ensure that went through and also forbidden droplet to open the door against a lot of decks but you've got to keep in mind sometimes uh that's going to be a little bit trickier to do and if i hadn't won that turn i was never going to put the resources back in my deck to resolve a second straight and i was going to be in a difficult situation so let's jump into another clip and i'll show you how to sequence the hand this hand's really interesting because it does have the potential to go for the otk but because our opponent's got spells and traps and we currently don't have a way of clearing those out it would be very risky to go for it so we know that we can resolve that grass looks greener this turn and the trick to doing that would be to activate the Crossite Designator preemptively and banish the card from our deck that we know is going to cause us the most trouble, which is Ash Blossom and Jorah's Spring. So with Ash Blossom and Jorah's Spring banished, we know that we're not going to get ashed when we go for our left arm offering. So from here, we can go ahead and play Joker Straight and discard our Ancient Chant. The reason we're discarding Ancient Chant is because we can play stuff out of the graveyard we can banish it from the graveyard and then summon the Wing Dragon or Ra, depending on what we draw a little later on. So, next up, we're going to get our King's Knight, Queen's Knight, Jack's Knight. And then we've got access to Left Arm Offering because we've now got two cards in hand. And we get that grass looks greener. From here, we just go ahead and flop that straight down. We'll, we'll send less cards to the graveyard because we have thinned our deck a little bit. But uh, from here, we get a free trick clown. Yeah, we'll take those. And oh, we did send one perform age damage juggler to the graveyard as well. That's really cool. Okay, so we can get back our flame eater. Or the Trick Kind. The Trick Kind is probably a little bit better because you can do other stuff with it. Uh, that will do 500 to each of us. Uh, next up, we can. We should probably check and see exactly what went to our graveyard. So. We've got a Joker's Knight, so we're getting that back in the end phase. Our Joker's Straight's coming back. Unfortunately, we had to fry up the Monster Reborn, so we won't be getting that. And we've got Joker's Straight. Okay, from this position. We can get Tornado Dragon and go after one of these spells or traps. No, we can't get Tornado Dragon because we played Joker's Straight. So we can make Terra Knight Deltros, but then Deltros doesn't actually win the game for us. Oh, this is a tricky situation. Okay, so we can banish this. Fish up a hat trick. We've got access to our hat trick. We've only got ancient chant to work with there. We didn't get fairy tale snow, unfortunately. So this is one of the challenges because if we go for the the Eltros, we're going to be a material short of going quite where we want to go. If we go for the Utopia, double or nothing. There is a chance that our opponent uh, interrupts that. It is the least risky of the plays available. Uh, we can also Starleash Patali uh, Dynamo by sending these two to the graveyard. And then using the effect. To be fair, we're still going to be in a pretty comfortable position, even if this attack doesn't go through because of our knight cards. So what we go here is we go for our double or nothing. And then Utopia double comfortably gets us our double or nothing.
nothing. And we can go for this game swing because even if they destroy our Utopia, we're going to get a bunch of cards back from the graveyard and then we're going to be set up to pressure our opponents next turn. So, we'll just go ahead and take our swing. Either opponent has the answer or they do not. Uh, if I had access to one more material, so for example, we just sent a fairy tale snow to the graveyard, I would have gone for the Deltros and cleared one of these back rows before committing to this. So now we got to 10k. Opponent didn't have anything, but if the opponent would have destroyed this, uh, we had in our graveyard uh, Joker's Knight and Joker's Straight. Both of those cards would have added themselves back to our hand, and we'd have put two knights back into our deck. So that next turn we could have followed up with another three cards. We'd have had a free card hand going into our next turn. So it was a it wasn't quite as all in as it would have looked for the opponent uh, because if they destroy our Star Liege Fatali Dynamo, we get to draw a card as well. So we're potentially then looking at four card hand next turn and we're threatening lethal if they don't have a response. So that's quite a safe attack to take. Let's jump into another clip. So this hand is something like we saw a little bit earlier in the combo video. We've got quite a few ways to consider OTKing our opponent depending on what our opponent's setup is looking like. This is nothing. The opponent's going to have zero interaction, so we can just go ahead and go Joker straight into Guardian Slime. Uh, but what we could do as well is also Forbidden Droplet, the Guardian Slime, and then go for that's one, two, Joker straight. Then if they negate this, we can left arm off a monster reborn and go for the kill. So it's a key thing of kind of balancing your hands. And the last card that we want to play in any of these hands is going to be left arm offering because we want our opponents uh, ash blossom and joy spring to never land on this card because we have to banish our hand as a cost so we're not going to be able to do anything else if they negate this so we bait it with things like joker straight they have to stop this realistically otherwise you're getting free monsters out of out of nowhere yeah just like we saw in the tutorial video it's just going to be a case of joker straight it resolves discard guardian slime uh, we summon our free knights very comfortably and yep we normal summon our king's knight goes ahead and gets us the way of ordering our chain again depending on what we want to do uh, in this case our, we know our opponent's got no interaction we don't have a way of stopping ash blossom so if we did do it this way the important thing to protect would be the guardian slime because we've also got access to monster reborn so say if our opponent Ash blossomed at this point. They didn't do the Joker straight for whatever reason. Some people are not familiar. They're not going to be familiar with the deck, so sometimes they'll Ash Blossom the Knight to stop you getting the third monster. Uh, what we do is we make sure that Guardian Slime is at the bottom of the chain because that's the most important part here. Uh, we want to make sure we get access to our Ancient Chant, and this way we guarantee it. Uh, so then we get our Knight, and then we've got Ancient Chant. Ancient Chant goes ahead and searches for our Wing Dragon of Ra. And again, if the opponent has uh, an Ash Blossom there, we can go for a double or nothing OTK. Uh, so we've got plenty of options available to us. Uh, like we just banish this. And then we can normal summon the Wing Dragon of Ra. Now, the cool thing about this, and the reason we haven't played our Joker's Knight or Fairy Tale Snow, is that this puts us under the five summons of Nibiru. This is literally just summon number four and attack for game. So we're very well protected against a huge range of what our opponent's interactions could be. And we still get the kill. And that means we've got 4,900 worth of attack points. We can just go and beat up this demise and get on with our lives. As we move further and further up the rank ladder. And it doesn't really matter uh, what the opponent's monsters attack are. Because we've got forbidden droplets to half that attack discarding Joker's Knight. And then we're going to have two cards in the graveyard that then shuffles a uh, Queen's Knight and a King's Knight back into the deck. And then they add those cards to our hand. So we're going to look at one more hand, uh, something with that grass looks greener. And then I'm going to go over a few replays and discuss exactly the decisions I was making during those games. So you get an idea of in a live game situation, how it's actually working. And for the last one of these little hand trainer guides we're going to do, we're going to open with That Grass Looks Greener. Unfortunately, this hand doesn't have a way to play around Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. However, we do have a couple of plays that we could lean into uh, should our opponent have the Ash Blossom. They won't because this is an AI game, but 
Right here we've got that grass looks greener and then we'll see what we fish out because we haven't got an obvious OTK at this point. Uh, we do get a trick clang so that's immediately going to give us access to another card. So yeah we can just go ahead and get our trick clang back. Uh, we'll take a thousand damage. We're not going to summon the perform age flame eater because that locks us into perform age special summons for the rest of the turn. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and check our graveyard and see what we've got in here. We know we've got Ra's Chant. Uh, we've also got the Damage Juggler, so that's going to let us get a, another copy of Hat Tricker. And interestingly, we have got the Guardian Slime and we've got Monster Reborn, so we've got the OTK there. And we've got Joker Straight which and Joker's Wild and Joker's Knight in our graveyard. That's incredible. We did lose our Double or Nothing, so we don't have a Double or Nothing OTK anymore. Uh, and we've got one Knight, two Knights in the graveyard. So we can actually get back two of our Knight cards, uh, which is pretty good. Because these trigger during each player's end phase, not just your own. Uh, what can happen is we can use the resources, uh, get our cards back. And then if we've got more Knights, the excess Joker Straight in our graveyard uh, will get us back other cards. So we've gone with this, uh, we can go Monster Reborn, Guardian Slime, yeah, and then we're just going to go ahead and get ourselves Ancient Chant by summoning the Egyptian God Slime. And that will get us Ancient Chant. Ancient Chant will go ahead and get us the Winged Dragon of Ra. So there's our Ra. And we've summoned once, twice, three times. This will be our fourth summon. So this actually prevents us from getting the Beerud. Yeah, so we can do it this way. And then I'll just do a quick check of the attack points to make sure that we've got enough. Ideally, you do the math uh, beforehand. 3,000, so... Yeah, uh, that's going to give us just shy of being able to kill our opponent. Uh, because we are... 7, 500. So we need to find 500 damage from somewhere. The good news is uh, we've got this uh, trick plan in our hand. And we can go ahead and get another one. Uh, as well. We also have a normal summon this turn, so we could perform age damage. Don't do the flame meter because it will kill you uh, in this situation, but yeah, we can... This doesn't play around Nibiru, but at this point we can go ahead. We have used our double or nothing, uh, so what we would go for here is just straight up Utopia. Actually, we can go Minerva, right? Uh, if we're not worried about Nibiru at this stage. Uh, this gives us a higher chance of finding our fairy tale snow. Now, what's really interesting with this deck is it's hard for me to just tell you exactly how to play it. You've got to think through these situations and then figure out, oh, if I do it at this point, now what can I do? Now what can I do? Because a huge part of your plays will be unlocked based on what gets sent to the graveyard by that grass looks greener. Yeah, so at this point, we've got, we've got lethal. We've got way over. And if it doesn't work out for whatever reason, we've got... A couple of knights in our graveyard one two three four and we've got one two three cards going back to our hand and shuffling three cards back to our deck and then we've got uh in the following turn during our opponent's end phase the other joker straight comes back and we shuffle back the last card in our graveyard so we have seven eight cards going into our turn and we're backed up by a nibiru so yeah we're we're sitting pretty pretty gucci here and as you can see We've got enough to just swing over our opponent quite comfortably. So I think that's pretty much everything you need to know from a hand trainer's perspective. How to sequence your plays uh, a little bit so that you can play around various hand traps. Uh, I think now the best thing is to just jump in and show you some of my replays of real games that I played on the rank ladder on the way up to rank 1. So that you can see exactly what I was doing in those games and decisions I made. I will give you the disclaimer that in that version of the deck I was playing two copies of Light Swarm Wolf. Which I covered in the deck profile why I changed the build that I'm showing you here, I believe this build that I'm showing you is more consistent and you'll see more success than I did with the build with the Lightsworn Wolves. But let's jump into the replays and you can get an idea of what's going on. So this game is against Virtual World. Now Virtual World is a very difficult deck to play against because they summon the 
True King of All Calamities, which essentially stops you from playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And I kind of want to show you this replay as it was a little bit fun on the ladder to actually figure out how I was going to get through that. But as we can see from our opening hand, it doesn't have that grass looks greener. We do have left arm offering, which is great, but we can't play Called by the Grave to back this left arm offering up because when we banish our hand, we lose the Called by the Grave and we can't set the Called by the Grave because left arm offering says you cannot set spells or traps during this turn. So this hand is a little bit tough, but we are going second, which is our preferred option. So we'll see what setup we're playing into. And yeah, opponent is going to go off and we'll just let them do their combos. We've got no interactions, so there's nothing that we're going to be able to do to prevent this setup. We're only just going to keep track of the cards that we can tr tell what they are. So things that go into our opponent's hand and what ends up in their graveyard and what their cards on the field does. The rest of it's largely irrelevant because we can interact with it at all. So, yep, opponent is then going to get the uh, Kirin. Uh, this is apparently the best card in the virtual card virtual world deck so the one to sh whenever i'm told on how to shut this deck down you want to stop your opponent's uh kirin opponent completely pops off they've got virtual gate so they've got an interaction here because they can shuffle two of their banished cards back to destroy one of my cards so that's going to make the wing dragon a little bit tricky and opponent is then going to flood the field and they're going to be able to get to their two level nines so they can overlay them for the true king of all calamities Constellar Patola, which is that? Ptolemy M7. And they go ahead and add a card back to their hand, Landos. Virtual World Landos, I believe that is. Virtual World Roshi, uh, Lau Lau, <laughs> Landos. That's completely wrong. This card is a huge problem for us because all of our cards end up getting banished. Anything sent from the field, so we kind of don't want that. That interferes with us quite, a w quite nastily. So we're going to look for ways to tag that a little bit later with our Called by the Grave. Yep, opponent's going to ladder all the way up. There's the two level 9s. They're going to get more triggers because that's exactly what's fair with this deck. Uh, and we'll see the True King of All Calamities coming down in just a second. Uh, the Virtual World Kyubi Senshin, I think it is. Yep, True King of All Calamities. Card not legal in the TCG or OCG, but here in Master Duel. So this is what we have to play around. So one of the biggest problems with this card is its quick effect is you can detach a material from this card to declare one attribute. This turn, all face-up monsters on the field become that attribute. All monsters your opponent's possession with that attribute cannot activate their effects or attack. So that is a bit of a problem for us because we need our monster effects. And because we're playing such a high deck count, our opponent can make an accurate guess on what attribute to call, which is going to be light because of Fairy Tale Snow, which I think we're going to see in this video. There's the Max C that we needed earlier. Uh, so yeah, opponent's going to detach their Kyobi. And we're just going to set two because we can't actually play through this with these cards. We don't want a left arm offering. We're trapped under True King of All Calamities. Uh, so that's not a great place for us to be. But what we can do is use Joker's Wild in our opponent's turn to send Joker straight to the graveyard. And then that's going to give us three knights in our opponent's turn when their True King of Calamities isn't on. Or our opponent's going to be forced to use True King of All Calamities in their turn. It means when it comes back to our turn, we've got room to play. So how does our opponent choose to play this? First, they're going to go ahead and use their Constellar and add a card back to their hand, which is going to be the Kirin. So opponent has the resources to OTK us this turn, and then they're going to try and bring back their Kyobi. So we are going to go ahead and Call by the Grave this Kyobi, and the key thing about that is that Call by the Grave lasts until the end of the next turn. So it will be his turn and my turn. So even if my opponent summons a second one, it will be negated, but our turn's not going to be disrupted by this card at all. Which is why we choose to, to use our Call by the Grave here. Opponent's saying to go for their Kirin. It would, we didn't have any way of stopping that, but we can throw out our Max C. So we're going to get some more draws if our opponent does want to go all in on the OTK. Depends how confident they're feeling. And a lot of people get a bit skittish around Max C. 
Uh, we've got that grass looks greener, so we know our next turn is going to have plays. And our opponent says, right, you're not doing anything with light monsters. So, opponent's got lethal here. We're going to let the first attack go through. We're going to take the second attack, and then we're going to summon Guardian Slime. Now, key thing here is that the Guardian Slime is going to be negated uh, by True King, but also our opponent's Virtual Gate is going to be able to destroy our monster. That's fine. We're, our life points are too low to the point of where we're not winning with the Winged Dragon of Ra in this game. But we do get to thin the deck. We've forced our opponent's interaction. Now we can Joker's Wild. Dump the Joker straight to the graveyard. Uh, which then we have to send another card from our hands to the graveyard, which is going to be the Ancient Chant we added. And then we get King's Knight, Queen's Knight. So opponent gets to make two attacks. Opponent should have attacked uh, the Queen first and then used the True King. He would have got extra damage in. And then we survived the turn. So we're not dead, and our opponent is going to go up to, I believe, Zeus. But because of that max C, we've got the resources to actually handle this. So there's the Zeus. So now the key thing that we want to get into, uh, burned out from our opponent is the Virtual World Gate. So like I said, in the opponent's end phase, we can go ahead and add back our Joker Straight and our Joker's Wild. And both of these cards, this now gives us the discard fodder that we need. And we've got a full combo in deck that our opponent's going to be forced to blow that virtual world gate pretty early on. And we've also drawn a Queen's Knight as well for our normal summon. So we can summon two. Opponent decides to try and keep us off of a rank four play. Because we're not locked into Light Warriors at this point. So we would have gone Tornado Dragon. So now we can Joker straight, discard our Joker's Wild, and we get our full combo. Uh, opponent goes to Zeus because they want to sweep the field and we've got the droplets for that. Yeah, like I said before, we did technically have access to a monster reborn with the that left arm offering, but we were never going to get away with that when our life points are so low. There's not actually a way to kill our opponent, so we are looking for a double or nothing play here. We also haven't played that grass looks greener because we don't want to send the double or nothing to the graveyard. And so what we'll do here is just then just go for it. And our opponent's left a monster with less than 2,000 attack in attack mode. Again, thanks to Max C. So we can just go ahead. We'll play that grass looks greener here. And then I realize, yeah, we get the wolves and stuff. We don't actually need it. In actual fact, this is kind of a bit of a misplay. And I realize and stop is that we are making our opponent's further interaction much stronger. And when really this is going to be the only play that matters this turn is trying to make that attack go through. And then, yeah, we get through True King of All Calamities over two turns, and we are able to clean the game up. So let's do one more replay, and then I'll wrap this up for you guys. And you should be then good enough to jump onto the rank ladder and start playing this deck yourselves. Okay, so for this game, we're playing against Shadol Invoked, and our opening hand is not great. We're not easy to OTK, uh, but it's not a great position to be in, because we don't really have... We have no way of getting to that grass looks greener. We haven't got access to Joker's Straight or Joker's Wild, so not really a comfortable position. But the game's not unwinnable. We've got Drawn Lockburn to slow an opponent down, and we've also got Guardian Slime and Perform Age Damage Juggler, which makes it very hard to attack through. So now we have access to Ra, but we can't really do anything else other than make this attack. And our opponent goes for a El Shadow Fusion, because we didn't know what our opponent was playing up until this point. Opponent summons Winder. Now, this should be a huge problem for us because we special summon a lot, right? So, what we want to do is figure out how we're going to win over this Winder. Uh, opponent goes, does some shit all things, draw an extra card with Beast, and we can just pass here. Our opponent's not going to be able to OTK us because we've got access to Guardian Slime and Damage Juggler. Opponent just sets two. I would assume that there's a Shadol Schism, but we'll use our one special summon from when we take that battle damage to summon Guardian Slime. And then during our turn, we'll use another special summon, our one special summon for the turn, to get ourselves Egyptian God Slime. And then that will trigger and get us an Ancient Chant. We're actually fishing for an Ash Blossom there, uh, but they choose not to use it. So then we get access to Ancient Chant. Ancient Chant Banish. Winged Dragon of Ra. 
And yeah, opponent packs, picks up their ball and goes home uh, because they know that we're going to be swinging for melee damage. And we can see the opponent all f forward out of that game uh, because their connection failed. It wasn't that they just conceded. They actually chose to leave the game. They just saw raw and went, we don't want none of that. So that's kind of a way of then looking at like something that's a little bit more oppressive than trying to navigate that even when you don't necessarily draw all the combos in your deck to do go full cycle. But yeah, that's uh, that's a good overview of this deck. And there you have it guys, a complete guide to the Poker Knight Wing Dragon of Ra deck called Royal Flush. So you can now take this deck and play it all the way from Rookie up to Platinum 1. I did it in a week, you guys will be fine. It'll just take a bit of practice, a bit of grinding, and you'll get there. And as mentioned in the deck video, feel free to go ahead and make any tactical changes you want after the hand trap lineup. Uh, maybe you want to cut one of the perform age play meters or some of the other changes you want to make to the deck. Uh, thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more great content and shoot us a like if this is something that interested you. I look forward to the next deck profile we'll be doing on this channel. So make sure you hit that bell so you don't miss any of the new content that we're putting out there. And I'll catch you for the next one. Cheers.